groups that can't be identified, you don't know what they are, have penetrated airspace over Edwards Air Force Base and have gotten close to the runways. Why haven't we dispatched planes? This doesn't happen very often. They were having to sort of explore it on the fly here as to what the regulations are, who had the authority to do what. So this is an unusual event. I would imagine back then it was just a fly by the seat of your pants type thing. I had no particular policy to go by or anything to tell me what to do. You had to make a decision and, and, and act on it. What these objects might be is still open for discussion. But with no protocol in place and the objects seeming to pose no immediate threat, it's determined that no further action can take place until the UFO officer contacts the tower. They are scrambling their UFO uh, officer out of the pad and uh, see if he wants to request base ops to take going up and looking. In the radio transmissions and in the phone conversations, we suddenly find out, wait a minute, Edwards had a UFO officer? What did the UFO officer do? Was he looking for flying saucers? Well, even if he was not looking for flying saucers, but only in charge of whatever unknown objects were up there, still, this is breaking news, that despite all the denials of the Air Force, and I mean year after year they would deny that UFOs are real, they have a UFO officer. At 3 a.m., over 90 minutes after the initial sighting, the UFO officer contacts the tower and attempts to determine the origin of these objects with the Los Angeles Air Defense Sector. LADS has confirmed radar sightings from five different points around Edwards. Uh, you don't see any balloons out of uh, Edwards? Any balloons? Yeah. Not that I know of. Edwards don't, don't have a Raven sign unit. So I doubt if they didn't see anything, uh, they wouldn't have no reason to. There's not any reason to send the balloons out of section anyway. Out of Edwards, huh? No. I see. That was the director down at Los Angeles Sector talking to the weatherman on Edwards mm -hmm. and asking had they lost a balloon. And he said, no, we don't have a Ravens on site, which is a weather site that, mm -hmm. that sends up balloons and does that kind of thing. We had no reason to do it. Edwards don't have a Ravens site unit. They have no reason to launch any weather balloons. So he plainly says on the tape, they did not launch a balloon. Okay. However, in the written report of this thing, it plainly states that balloon was launched from there that night. In reality, it didn't happen, but it's in the classified written report. The official United States Air Force report clearly dismisses the multiple accounts as sightings of a weather balloon. If these objects were in fact weather balloons, why the next decision? To scramble a fighter jet. And what did that jet see? There was approximately five to seven objects. They were quickly moving and it would be stationary for some time and then quickly move straight up. On October 7, 1965, multiple eyewitnesses report several objects above Edwards Air Force Base. A formerly classified document from the United States Air Force clearly states that this object was a weather balloon, although according to the tower audio, Edwards was not capable of launching such a craft. Did you launch any balloons out of uh, Edwards? Any balloons? Yeah. Not that I know of. Edwards don't, don't have a raven sign unit, so I doubt if they didn't see anything, they wouldn't have no reason to. But the UFO officer who has recently contacted the tower is looking for a more rational explanation and continues to pursue the weather balloon theory. It's very hard for a balloon to go from north to south at a low altitude when I report the wind is out of the west at two knots. If the wind is out of the west and one of them is going north to south and then turned west, it'd be very difficult for a balloon to turn into the wind. So what we're saying here is they don't have the flight characteristics of a balloon. There's a report that no balloons were launched that night, and yet in the classified report, there's a report of a balloon that's being launched. In fact, according to the report, the objects are described as weather balloons three times, despite all the evidence to the contrary. And these kinds of weather balloons that they were looking for, are they typically lit? No. Do they have marking lights? No. no. The only other explanation offered by the UFO officer 
is that this object could have been a man-made aircraft, contradicting what is reported by Soros and the alert pilot on the runway, Daryl Clark. Soros makes his opinion known. The uh, UFOB officer saw this. He thinks it's an airplane. I do not. The UFO officer said it looked like an airplane to him. He is not a trained pilot. He is not a trained anything other than he was a UFO officer assigned to. I don't know what his normal duty was. But here you got an air traffic controller that says it's not an airplane. You got an alert pilot standing on the ground that says it's not an airplane. But the UFO officer thinks it's an airplane. Now, Bill, do you think that part of the UFO's officer's job is to say things are airplanes. Remember, the Air Force was in the UFO business, the flying saucer business, in 1965. They didn't get at it until 1969. So do you think part of that person's job was to discount these things and not pass along stuff to Blue Book? I think that's speculation, Bill. I'm with Chuck that the guy was not trained. He had probably no aviation-related duties whatsoever. And all he knew about airplanes was that they had a red light, a green light, and a white light. Mm -hmm. And he said, looks like an airplane to me. There was no conspiracy. It was just flat inexperience, and he didn't know what he was talking about. It. Whether the object is an airplane or something else, the consensus in 1965 is that they need to get a closer look at whatever is hovering in restricted airspace. But the only live planes at Edwards are armed with nuclear weapons, which require high-level authorization to launch. These alert birds are specifically designated to protect the U.S. from an incoming attack. They are armed with nuclear weapons in the event that an immediate strike or counter-strike is necessary. To launch one of these nuclear-armed F-106s over U.S. airspace, is far too risky without knowing anything further about these objects. We can't use one of your alert birds, but do you have another 106? Oh, well, that's all we have. That's all you have. That's all we have is the six on alert. I suppose by this time it's getting on toward four o'clock in the morning. I imagine that uh, it's been going on for two and a half, three hours by this time. But because the time the bird got up, and got in position and tried to make a run on it. The things had risen in altitude, they had moved in their position, they weren't near as visible as they once were. Do you think that somebody was holding it back or do you think it's, this was normal procedure? Well, this would be normal procedure because they didn't have a bird that was a, a not armed and they didn't have a pilot to fly. And we had one on greater than one hour, but I believe that's just because uh, we don't have a pilot here for it. We'd have to have an authentication on the, uh, on the scramble with uh, the weapon board. They couldn't take the alert guy in case he had to go with the alert bird, so they had to get an additional pilot that wasn't even on duty at the time. They had to go rack somebody out of the bed to get him down there to fly the airplane. Good time this uh, bird is taking off. Is that a hot bird? No, no, he's not loading. When the go-ahead to launch a plane to intercept is finally given, the turnaround time is significant, as it is after 3 a.m., and the pilot and ground crew have to be awoken to get the bird in the air. They were geared to look outward. 